out of the way so we can get on with uh, the show. Um, um, I hate that the Kings have been favored in this, this match because it just works against you when they expect you to win. <sighs> Excuse me. It just makes me emotional. So I, I'm glad they won the first game, but uh, it's not over yet. Well, obviously it's not over yet. It just started. But... Do most of you have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> I got a few down, a few hockey fans down here. Phoenix! They look good this year. Um, what was I going to ask? Um, I don't think I was going to ask anything. You, did, you guys were going to ask anything? <laughs> Um, I just want to say, I've never been to the Phoenix Comic Con before, and um, so far, I have one question. How do you stand the heat? Please! Oh, it's a dry heat. Now, try this. It's, um... It's, well, Phoenix is wonderful, I guess. <laughs> but I'll bet you half of you aren't from Phoenix. Out of towners? Phoenix? All right, and I'll alter that ratio in my second speech. But, um, oh, but I, is there some format you guys can yeah, use? I, if you would like mis to ask Mr. Anderson a question, we do have two microphones set up, one right here, one right here. We have these lovely line moderators in front of you. Uh, if you would like to go ahead and start lighting up, we'll get underway. Do they have to be that close? <laughs> I mean, look how far back those people are. <laughs> Might be harder to hear them back there. They're on a microphone! <laughs> Anyone having trouble hearing me back there? The real question is, do they have to be this cute? Oh. You're gonna take that from me? <laughs> Hide. <laughs> my, my question is, do you remember the Stargate episode when you and Christopher were trapped in the time dilation? Yeah! <laughs> What's it called? Do you remember? Um, window of opportunity. <laughs> Did you make up all those really hilarious parts? That's my daughter. Did, I, what? Did you and Tilk make up all those really funny parts? Well, I made mine up. <laughs> and most of his. <laughs> no, we had fun doing things like that and um the whole concept of the show, I mean, it's very well written, I have to say, that the, the uh, producers and writers and um, the script writers were really good at their job and what they did, but I grew up, when we first met, I had sort of had to warn everybody that, first of all, I had to warn MGM that I, was, I couldn't take the job unless they would trust me and let me because I was at a point in my career, and that's a boring story, but you just want an answer to the question. <laughs> so, yes, I made a point. <laughs> this, the, uh, I wanted the, uh, hell, I can't remember which season it is, but they have a gag reel where uh, Carter, and it's the scene where you guys find the, uh, Stargate in, in Antarctica, and you're trapped in the, in the glacier, and she pulls the MacGyver prank on you. <laughs> I'm trapped in a glacier with MacGyver! Was that a gag reel? <laughs> I thought it was an episode. <laughs> I swear. What was going through your head when she's first, I mean, the scene was, you know, she was trying to do a serious scene, and all of a sudden she you know, changed on you. What, what kind of went through your head when it went south? Well, my first impulse was to yell, cut. <laughs> that was one of the producers, and time is money. But I'd much rather have fun than save money. So it was fun. The 
Smat that's the definition of smattering. Um, no, I, she was, I thought it was very clever. I did just, you know, didn't expect it in a dress rehearsal like that. But uh, I think the notion was, I, for, at, at first I, I thought, well, she's forgotten her lines. <laughs> and she's off book now, and oh my god, she's talking about MacGyver. <laughs> so I had to like turn around to the camera and get a little smirk, and, like I was in the know. <laughs> but they got me. It was the epitome of cute. <laughs>
and it was over. I won the day, but I handed him the crown soon after. I'll teach you to ask those questions. Maybe not. Hello, thank you for braving the heat to be with us. Uh, my question is, what was your favorite memory of working with Michael Shanks? I just saw him in Germany about a week ago. He's, um, Michael and I uh, really got to uh, like each other a lot. And in great part, later on in the series, where his, um, our characters couldn't have been further apart um, in mentality and priority, etc. But he, uh, you know, I don't have any, like, cute little quips or anything like that. I just, I have to say that um, Michael and Amanda were the two actors that I loved working with all the time. There's no aspersion on Chris, he just didn't have anything to say. <laughs> but Michael and Amanda both are wonderful actors, and they can talk fast. And it facilitated my character choice, mind you, it was a choice, to uh, maybe not talk so fast and actually just respond with a simple, what? <laughs> And it worked for all of us, but uh, I don't know, I just I adore the guy. He's, um, you know, he can be a real dink around hockey season, but uh, <laughs> see how I cleaned it up, Mom? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I have a general great fond memory of my... You should see him right now, I don't know how many follow his career to see what he looks like, but the guy's addicted to working out, as opposed to me, <laughs> who obviously is enjoying his retirement. <laughs> oh. I swear, if, if I get invited back here next year, I will lose 30 pounds, I promise. <laughs> I'll start with my shoes. <laughs> That was the case, and I didn't want that to happen. I wanted her to have some fun. Yeah. So I've been single dad again ever since, and um, I've never made a better choice in my life. Although, for Wiley's sake, uh, I wish she had more stability um, in the situation, but I um, yeah, should yeah, get over it. <laughs> After a ton of therapy. And <laughs> no, she's good. I don't regret giving up anything. I don't regret leaving the show. Um, but, yeah. I, and now I just, I, obviously, I'm just enjoying, you know, I do a bunch of work for the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. And, <laughs> and uh, part of the brain in Los Angeles. River keeper, but uh, so that's how I'm kind of and hanging out with my dogs, which was yeah, dogs. I love my pups, but no, no 
other jobs that uh, I turned down during that time. I'd like to say they, they offered me the Indiana Jones <laughs> franchise, <laughs> but that was some other guy. I don't know <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Besides, what was it like? <laughs> sure. I'm 6'2". <laughs> I used to weigh 195. <laughs> and there's some very pointed and distinct laughter from the back. Someone must be in the know. <laughs> Anybody else? No? Okay. Now, how the 
tank lighter, what? Hair light. Hair light. Ultra light. That weighed about a ton and a half. <laughs> In fact, um, you know the, uh, what's the show on Discovery? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mythbusters. <laughs> Love that show. Love those guys. Met them and they're just, well, they're geniuses is what they are. But um, they did a, a, a busting of us on that show. We, they tried making the exact same ultralight that we had made on the show. They, they replicated everything they could. And uh, I think they used the same gauge bamboo that we used for the structure, didn't it? Yeah. Which made it impossible to get it off the ground, <laughs> let alone do anything off a cliff that was the runway, but do this. <laughs> That's what it did. <laughs> but so consequently, watching that, we, and we shot it, and of course we did some editorial things to it to make it seem as though it disappeared off the cliff and then all of a sudden comes up on the other side, down the road at least. But um, that was the movie magic. The Ghostbuster guys, Ghostbuster. <laughs> Yeah, the Ghostbuster guys. I meant to say <laughs> Mythbuster guys uh, proved that it's impossible. But that was my so that was my favorite because it was a total failure. <laughs> Off screen. Go ahead, right here. Hi, uh, I was just uh, wondering if uh, you and Kurt Russell ever met. Clearly, the better uh, Jack O'Neill, but I just wanted to. <laughs> That's so much Remember his? It's, he smoked and had a, a lighter that he gave to Alex. What's Scrub. Thank you. <laughs> Stay close. Um, yeah, I've met um, him several times. We used to live in the same general area, and uh, he and Goldie would take their dogs and run up uh, an area near where I lived at the time. And we'd cross paths, and I had Australian Shepherds, and uh, they had a huge, um, oh, say you take a tricolor Australian Shepherd, tricolor now, remember, black, white, little brown, and you blow it up. <laughs> Not a Saint Bernard. Mountain dog. One at a time. Come on. <laughs> Bernice Mountain Dog. Bernice. Bernice Mountain Dog. Thank you. Very well done. Um, our next question is worth 20 points. <laughs> so anyway, that's, you know, I made, I said, hey, nice dog. And he stopped and got to pet it. Then I pet the dog. <laughs> and Goldie. <laughs> I had a good time that day. <laughs> but it was a dry heat. He's <laughs> <laughs> a nice guy. <laughs> Anybody know how old he is? Kurt no, Russell? Uh, is he? Young, well, everyone's younger than me. <laughs> Younger than I, uh, actually. Um, where was I? There I was, 40,000 feet. No, he's a, he's a big guy. Yes. You said the total opposite of that. <laughs> it's the heat. <laughs> you having a good day? You see yourself? <laughs> Looking good. So, between watching MacGyver, I grew up watching MacGyver, 
and my dad's running commentary on the show, I grew up with the belief that I could fix anything. And about a month or two ago, I was fixing one of my Xbox remotes that my dogs ate, right? Dogs and Xbox remotes. My 16-year-old son sent me a text message, what are you doing? I said, I'm MacGyvering the Xbox remote. And he said, great, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Clearly, I failed as a mother, but my question is... <laughs> but you're younger than I am, too, so... What words of advice, MacGyver words of advice, seven broad, Stargate advice do you have for our kids today? <laughs> MacGyver words? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we use the English language like everyone else. <laughs> uh, um, I'm not sure what that, if that's more profound a question than I would make the answer <laughs> sound. Pull back that tape and straighten that sentence out. Oh. Um, well, uh, all I can do is just kind of reiterate what the concept was all about. And it, came down, I keep shortening it the, the more I refer to it, but it was, there was nothing really unique about um, the character's approach to anything, to any um, problem solving. It was all a matter of common sense and um, observing, listening, watching, sensing in any way you can things around you that may allow you to add somehow either to the solution to a problem or the cultural upheaval of the Mayan society. <laughs> and stuff. It's kind of like that. So I, to the kids today I say, follow that advice. <laughs> Sometimes I just tickle myself. <laughs> it's so disjointed. Hi. Um, I was wondering what your imaginings was of the furlings, or what your favorite imagining or interpretation was of them, since we never really got to see them. Was it the furlings? <laughs> Is it the furlings? I don't remember the name. The, the, one, yeah, the, one cl the one race that you never got to see in Stargate. You guys made fun of it a little bit and made it look like Ewoks when you guys knocked them in the... I can't remember what episode. Do I? I'm all extreme. That doesn't help. Don't tell me the title of the episode. That's <laughs> the fur, I remember hearing the word furlings. Were they little fuzzballs? <laughs> they never showed up. They were supposed to be the other super race along with the rest of them. And they never, they never <laughs> saw them? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I figured it would have come up at some point and somebody might have told us that. You or you might have imagined something when you read the script, but... Ooh, reading the script, eh? <laughs> well, there's your answer. <laughs>
greatest time of my life on camera. That is. And, but I remember doing the, the fact that I was shooting a pilot for something and I had, just before auditioning for, uh, for uh, the show, I had, um, I was on the verge of just like taking off and you know, I was riding a motorcycle around and didn't, f you know, wasn't, nothing was really happening. It, was, it wasn't coming my way and I wasn't impressing anyone. <laughs> And so it was that with that mindset and that kind of uh, karmic reasoning floating around that when I got a call from my agent and he said, get over to Paramount, dude, you've got a reading in about uh, an hour. Now, where I was was north of Malibu, up the coast a little bit, I'm on my at that time, I'm sorry to say, my Harley Davidson. That particular model was a terrible model in years. So, but anyway, it got me quite quickly to where I was going. So I, and I had longish hair, and I walked in to the audition. Have you heard this before? Did I? He's going. Okay, I'll try. I may have to hit this rest stop over here. Um, so I got, I got I get into, and I'm wearing, literally, no joke, wearing the brown bomber jacket that became iconic, apparently. Um, and my hair, we didn't have to wear helmets back then, my hair was just, I looked like a dandelion. <laughs> and I, I did this, so I had this pathway. <laughs> It wasn't a happy look. <laughs> and I walked in and, and um, was asked to do the reading and so it took it and I, I didn't have my glasses with me. Or I mean I had them with me, I wasn't wearing them. So I asked, because I hadn't seen the script before, I asked if I could wear my glasses to do the, um, the audition. And as the story goes, Henry Winkler tells the story of how they all looked at each other in the office, and there were about 10 producers, writers, and the like, um, all sitting in there, and apparently they all looked at each other, and kind of quietly, because I couldn't see them, but they were <laughs> looking at each other, and kind of their eyebrows were going up, and their heads were slightly nodding, before I had even read, because in the, in the, uh, what I found out later was that they were, had been looking for the type of character that I basically presented to them when I walked through the door. <laughs> I don't know in retrospect if that was good or bad, but, um, uh, but the point was that anyone who would be as selfless and non-ego strewn and didn't non machismo to ask if he could wear a pair of like lame ass reading glasses <laughs> during an audition was the kind of guy that they wanted to play their character and that was you know not that I just read the hell out of it too <laughs> So, uh, what was the question? Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> Superhero. Um,
questions. They would finally say, I'll get rid of them. can't take this chatter anymore. Uh, so eight days of that, and then a day at least of second unit, where parts of this group that we didn't get, which you so, what is that? And then there would be editing, which to me took forever, but um, which is rightful because editing is so important, you know, especially in, in an effects driven show. Not that ours was driven by effects, but it certainly had a fair share. Um, so, all total, um, a few days. <laughs> Give or take. No, I'd say close to a, a month of fine tuning and all that other, laying music in and voiceovers. It adds up and it does take quite a long time. So it's not just a, oh, well, let's watch Stargate tonight, I think. That looked easy to make. <laughs> Did that even come close to answering? <laughs> Yes. I've always wanted to be an example for our children. And after that answer, she does this. I'm sorry. Your parents will explain what the problem is. Answer your question. I, no, I didn't. 
take jobs or turn down jobs contingent on what the character's love life is like. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, unless the co-star was, no, I don't know. Uh, um, no, I, that had <laughs> no effect on anything. <laughs> but yeah, it is rather cute. <laughs> Curious that, uh, well, you know what, I think the inf inf inference from Pete Thornton was that MacGyver was kind of a dude, you know, like he would, all this, this eyebrow raising that he could do so well. Um, and I'm not sure what the impression was about MacGyver's love life on Stargate, except that everybody wanted Jack and Sam to get together. <laughs> least of which people left was me. You know, you know, some people have a way with words and some people not have a way. That's pretty much what happened just there. Um, but only in uh, parallel universe fantasy land did uh, um, I almost said Jack and Sam. Jack and Sam. See what you don't. <laughs> Got to make out. And that was in the Broken divide. My wildest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> so, very poor. <laughs> Acting! <laughs> you look like perplexed. <laughs> Open. <laughs> I'll be 
obviously something got sliced. <laughs> I've, I've uh, sliced open my one of my fingers playing with a um, Swiss Army knife. There I go again. Yeah. Just kind of chopping at a back seat of a Cadillac. There's an episode where I had to do that, so between takes I was doing this. And it's not a fixed blade. They folded over on my finger. And, uh, for some reason we kept them really sharp. <laughs> So I, I had to have that song back on. Um, I've had, uh, oh God, so much. One, but one in particular, I got shot in the, my ankles. Plural, how do you do that? With a, uh, a pellet gun, basically. It was a, it, it was a gun that shot um, uh, pellets of some kind that would spark. They're spark hits is what they're called, but they're, they're made out of like a graphite something combo of any any effects guys in here can clarify that. But I was supposed to uh, run, getting shot at, and um, and then jump in the back seat of this car. Maybe it was the front seat. I don't know. But um, I did everything I was supposed to do. But the the effects guy is literally shooting a rifle that's that's loaded with these pellets and. They're not jelly beans, you know? they're not gooey, they're hard as, like what they are, rocks, basically. So he's um, sparking right behind me as I'm running across this um, tarmac. And, and I jump into the window and I clear everything about the, the window. It's not an easy thing to do, by the way. Try it sometime, all of you, especially the kids. <laughs> So I get in and my feet, um, and it's my own fault because I told this effects guy, when in doubt, to make it look good, make it close. So he made it so close that he perforated my one of my ankles and caused uh, the other one to break into like a, a smattering of blood stain. But you know, if you throw a bunch of rocks on something, somebody. <laughs> All you kids. Um, that little spackles of blood will show up. Well, that's kind of what happened to me. It's really not such a good story. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is there any chance that you're going to do another Stargate movie? Because we'd love to see it. Yeah. I don't know what the plans are. Seriously, I, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing something because at this point in time they would uh, have more money to uh, or uh, Brad um, Wright would demand more money to do the show. We had standing sets, we were ready to do a series of movies, um, Stargate movies, but MGM was just, you know, not interested. The bottom line is they wanted to make money we wanted to spend money. <laughs> it's the age-old conflict, but um, I don't know that there are any plans to do one. I've been approached by some foolish people to do a MacGyver uh, thing. And I've said, I've said uh, that I would only consider doing um, uh, kind of a one-off about MacGyver if they would buy into the fact that he's old and gray, he's out of shape, and he's losing his balance a lot more. <laughs> that, to me, um, of course the only people that would really get it would be the original audience of the guy. But otherwise, they're just looking at some old fart trying to <laughs> But the joke would be, you know, isn't that cute? <laughs> anyway, so I would consider doing that if they would um, meet my demands. <laughs> so we are at the uh, five minute mark. We have time for one more question. Me. We'll see. <laughs> for one, I feel like I'm in the, in the presence of God. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> but 
Is it okay to call you Rick? Yes. Yeah. Right. You're supposed to. Rick, uh, so many fans since the get-go have wanted to see, uh, you know, Colonel and Colonel O'Neill and uh, Major Samantha Carr get together for the longest time, and we never got it. Um, like, how did, did you ever get pressure from a lot of fans about that subject in the show? Yeah. I mean, like, like every single second of the day. We found over a course of time that we have the horniest audience. <laughs> wanted us to get it on. <laughs> and uh, the only reason we didn't <laughs> is because we were uh, being respectful to the Air Force and their rules of engagement. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, so we didn't, uh, we didn't go you know, you know, there are things like tailgate going happening and all this, the abuse that was taking place back then and now. God damn. But um, so no, uh, I understand the uh, the desire. <laughs> Truly, I do. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just wasn't in the scripts. Colonel Neil kissed Sam 
kissed Sam Carter. What? <laughs> Say thank you and good night.